For more on this fast-spreading disease, let me turn to Dr. Peter Hotez. He's the Dean of National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College and also specializes in pediatrics and microbiology, and he joins us from Houston, Texas. Dr. Hotez, welcome. Thanks for having me. How uh, surprised are you by what we've seen around the world, especially in the Americas in the past few weeks, and how worried are you about the situation? Well, uh, Margaret Chan, the WHO Director General today, used the term explosive. I think that's a good term. There's been more than a million cases in Brazil just over the last year. Now it's immediately spread to Colombia, where there's been 700,000 cases. Uh, it's now in Central America and Southern Mexico, and it's knocking off various Caribbean islands almost every week to the point where I think by the end of February, the entire Caribbean uh, should be affected. And then, of course, we have the U.S. Gulf Coast. So I think we're looking at an impressive situation in terms of how rapidly this virus has spread. And of course, we've got this horrific humanitarian tragedy that it's associated with birth defects when the virus uh, infects a pregnant woman. So clearly, as you mentioned, uh, a big risks to pregnant women. Who else is considered a high risk? Well, I think uh, the infection during pregnancy is dominant right now because it's producing a horrific condition known as uh, microcephaly, where the virus attacks the central nervous system of the unborn baby. It stunts head growth and also is associated with abnormal brain development. So these babies uh, ha are going to be faced with a lifetime of uh, profound uh, mental disability. So you have not only the uh, terrible health impact, but the social and economic costs. And I think that's why there's so much emphasis. The virus, otherwise, among adults, can produce a mild illness, sometimes no illness. Uh, in a few cases, it's been associated now with uh, neurologic complications, Guillain-Barre. But the overwhelming dominant concern uh, are the birth defects and microcephaly. And that's why uh, the world is taking notice. And that's why uh, Director General Chan is taking these measures. Uh, Dr. Hotez, WHO says the Zika virus is spreading to all but two countries in the Americas. Canada and Chile are not in that group. Why? Uh, the reason is, is because this is a virus that depends on a very specific genus of mosquitoes, the Aedes mosquitoes. And in all of those countries, except the two you just mentioned, Chile and Canada, we have either Aedes aegypti or Aedes albopictus. And so all of the countries are vulnerable. There's some back and forth about the extent of the risk of the United States. The U.S. Public Health Service right now is downplaying the risk, saying that because uh, people in the United States live in air conditioning and do not have degraded environments, that there should not be a large outbreak. I, I have a somewhat different perspective working on the Gulf Coast, where uh, there's another factor that no one is really considering, and that is poverty. So poverty is a risk factor because when people live in inadequate dwellings, they have uh, absent mosquito uh, uh, proofing, uh, they're exposed, they have environmental degradation, discarded tires along the side of the road. So the same conditions that are causing these explosive epidemics in northeastern Brazil, and I think there's, we're going to see the same situation in Haiti. There are pockets like that of great poverty along the Gulf Coast, including here in Houston. So I'm quite worried about those, those areas as well. And do you believe the WHO should declare this a public health emergency, doctor? I think if, if by declaring a public health emergency, it's going to bring resources and it's going to command the intention of leaders of the Latin American states, then by all means, yes. Because what it's going to take right now, given the fact that we do not have a vaccine, the only effective measure that we have right now is aggressive mosquito control. This is going to mean uh, an intensive spraying effort, drainage of standing water. It's going to require a military-style campaign across the Western Hemisphere uh, to help eradicate the 80s mosquitoes. The good news is that we have proof of principle that this is possible. Between 1947 and 1962, the 80s mosquito was eradicated in 18 Latin American countries as well as several Caribbean countries. I think we have to revisit that past and see what we have to do to uh, reproduce that feat. All right, Dr. Uh, Hotez, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks for having me.